If you want to do swaps on Uniswap V3's universal router, this video is for you. Because let's be honest, I love Uniswap, but nobody new to DeFi development understands this documentation on universal router. This may be the only complete example of using Universal Router on YouTube, so stick around and I'll show you how to swap ETH for USDC using Uniswap's Universal Router. Let's go. I'm Blockman, and I show DeFi developers how to use Uniswap with code. If you want to learn to use all the Uniswap v3 swap and liquidity functionality with code, sign up for my Uniswap v3 masterclass, link in the description. Now let's write some code. Let's speed through the setup as fast as we can, so we can get to the meat and potatoes of doing a swap. We're going to import a number of objects from a number of Uniswap packages, the Universal Router SDK, SDK Core, V2 SDK, V3 SDK, and the Router SDK. And notice we'll be doing some aliasing, like for the trade object, so we don't run into collisions importing the same object from three different Uniswap libraries. We're also going to need the Uniswap V3 pool artifact so that we can initialize pools and get current information from them. We'll need JSBI to do some math with large numbers that are too big for vanilla JavaScript. And we'll need an ERC20 ABI to initialize token contracts so we can get the number of tokens in a wallet before and after our swap. We'll import hardhat rather than ethers because it has all the functionality that ethers does inside it. And then we'll use that to get the provider with hardhat.ethers.provider. The provider is how we'll read data from the blockchain. Now I'm going to create token instances for ethers, wrapped ether, and USDC. These are required to initialize some other Uniswap objects further down the line. Ether is pretty simple to set up by calling on chain on ether that we imported. And wrapped ether and USDC take the chain ID the address where they're deployed, the number of tokens, the symbol, and the name. Then we'll initialize contracts for both wrapped Ether and USDC so we can get token balances in a wallet for each. Now we have a get pool function, and I found this in Uniswap's GitHub and made some small changes. This simply returns some data about a pool that we want to swap on. Let's step through this really quickly. It gets the tokens in the correct order. Then it gets the address for the pool that uses those tokens and a specified fee amount. It initializes the pool's contract. It gets liquidity for the pool. Then it gets the current tick and price in square root price x96 format from the slot zero attribute on the pool and encodes liquidity and the price as big integers using the JSBI that we imported. And then it builds a pool instance to return using the pool object that we imported. And this is not like an instance of a pool contract that we would initialize with Ethers.js. This is a different type of pool object and it comes from Uniswap's library. I also pulled this swap options function from Uniswap's GitHub. It builds some default option arguments for the universal router swap. And you can change this, but the default allows up to a 5% slippage and sets the recipient to the address of our choosing. And finally, I found this build trade function in Uniswap's GitHub. It formats trade data for V3 trades, V2 trades, and mixed trades so that it can be passed to swap ERC20 call parameters function, which then builds the data we send in the transaction to the universal router contract. The original build trade function heavily used TypeScript, but I've removed that for your readability. The data this returns has a very specific structure, including an object for the route, the input, and the output, which are route and currency objects. We'll be making this transaction on a fork of mainnet, so you can select any wallet on mainnet with Ether and do the transaction on behalf of them. And don't worry, this is a fork, so what you do has no effect on the real mainnet. 
but being able to start from an existing wallet just makes testing our transactions here more simple. Now in the main function, start by getting a signer for the recipient address that we hard-coded above, and we do that with get impersonated signer function. Get current data about the pool with the get pool function we discussed above, and I've hard-coded this to use the medium tier fee pool, but you could use one of the other fee tiers if you wanted. Now set the amount we want to pass into the swap, and I'm just using one ether here to keep it simple. Create a trade object using v3 trades method from route, and you'll pass in a v3 route object which takes a pool and tokens, a currency amount object, and a trade type. Now call our build trade function and pass in the trade inside an array. And we pass the object inside an array because build trade is designed to handle multiple trades in an array. But we're just doing a simple one trade swap here. Build the options object using our swap options function we discussed. Then call swap ERC20 call parameters on universal router swap router and pass in router trade and options. This returns data that we can almost directly send in a transaction to the universal router contract to do a swap. Now ensure the swap goes through by checking token balances in the wallet before and after the trade. We get the balance of Ether with provider.getBalance, and we can get the balances of wrapped Ether and USDC with balance of, calling balance of on their respective token contracts. Then we'll log the balance of these tokens, taking into account the number of decimals on each of the tokens. USDC only has six decimals built into the number. Then send the transaction by calling signer.sendTransaction and pass in call data returned from the swap ERC20 call parameters above, the address of the universal router, as well as value, the amount of Ether to send and the recipient, the address of the sender. Wait for the transaction to complete, and log the status so we know if it succeeds. One means success, and zero means failure. Then re-log token balances in the wallet after our swap, and these balances should change. Now let's give this a run in our terminal. Here we can see the balances before and after. So Ether decreased from 49 to 48, and the amount of USDC increased by about the current value of Ether. That means this worked. Leave your questions and tutorial requests in the comments, like and subscribe if you're still watching, and I'll see you next time.